Okay, so I'm going to uh, just start by making a uh, turntable here in Unreal. I'm going to launch the engine. Okay, so my preference is to go to film video uh, category, film and video events, and choose a, a blank scene Where? in uh, Unreal. Um, so I did actually make a little mistake when I started this. I, I didn't ensure to turn on ray tracing. So you can always go back and do that by going to Edit, Project Settings. And uh, you can just literally type in the search, ray trace. So we want to uh, enable ray tracing. So uh, we want to enable hardware ray tracing, ray trace shadows, ray trace skylight. Uh, and enable ray trace while editing. Of course, we can turn this on. This is Unreal Engine 5.1. Now, it will tell you um, you have to restart the engine because that's to kind of recompile the shaders. So I'm going to say restart now. And compiling takes a while, so I'm going to pause the recording again. Okay, so it took a while, but uh, Unreal has rebooted. So I'm just going to close this. Um, I do have a, a low poly mesh that I've uh, created here. Oops. Just bring this object in. Um, if the object is too small, I will scale it up just to make it a little easier to manage. There we go. I'm just adjusting the scale of that object. I also want to get it into a position where it's uh, ready for presentation. So I'm going to just rotate this thing 90 degrees this way and this way. Okay, so hit F to frame that. Um, usually for my base plane, I, I actually like to strip everything out. So I'm going to actually strip out the atmospheric fog, delete it. I'll take the uh, full ejector, delete that. I don't need that. I don't need the source light. I don't need player start. I don't need the sky sphere or the skylight or the reflections. Now, your interface, uh, when you actually load or run Unreal 5, it'll be basically in this default layout where you it sort of like pops up and down which is fine but i find it a little easier uh to to use the classic layout so i'm going to go to window load layout uh ue4 classic so um that way i, I have a kind of an easier way to, to to grab stuff so on the left side there's this thing called place actors so if i go to the lighting category i'm going to drag in a rectangular light okay so this is basically going to be like my key light. I'm going to uh, rotate it roughly into position. So I like it at a higher angle. And by the way, I, I want this, usually when I do rotations, I like to handle it in a local transform. So if I hit that, that key there and switch from the globe to this little cube, it now allows me to rotate um, based on that object's orientation. So I can sort of see roughly where it's, it's pointing to. I also like to increase the width and height of the of the light. I'm going to just over over exaggerate the intensity for now just to show you with ray trace lighting and a large light source. You see when the light source is smaller, the shadows are a lot sharper, but as we increase this light source, the shadows get nice and soft and I for me I find it's it's very visually appealing. So this is one reason I'd like to um, set up my lighting this way. Um, for the ground plane, by the way, we can just click on the default material and maybe switch to, you know, I like something very basic, like a simple kind of metallic material is fine. Uh, I'll try something like this. We'll see. Yeah, I don't know what that is. I, I'm, I'm not going to pick that, but. Try metal. That's okay. Okay, and then like I said, the light source right now, it's really, really intense. I've over-exaggerated, so I'm going to bring this uh, down in terms of intensity. For the material, by the way, um, I think it imports with the material, but I, I usually just like to delete that material. Um, so I'm going to right click in my content browser, which is right here. Go to materials and just simply click a new material. I'll drag it onto my object. And if we double click on the material, we can basically drag out a base color. So if you want to create a base color, you have to use something called a constant three vector. So you left click and drag from base color and then you type in constant and you'll see three vector. 
Okay, so what, what this allows you to do is double click this colored source and then you can sort of pick a, a color or a value. I usually could still like to kind of go with grayscale uh, for now. And I'm gonna just uh, scale this material window down a bit. I'm gonna drag in, this is my normal map that I've imported. So I'm gonna uh, left click and drag that into the normal slot of the material. So, um, yeah, that's plugged in now. Sometimes what can happen, by the way, is like your, um, let me just save this. If you close it, it'll ask you to save the material, so we'll just tell it to save. And I'll just make sure, doubly make sure that material is loaded. There, I think it uh, took a second to load. And by the way, when you're creating lights, I should mention this as well. The um, you want to make sure that you set the light to movable. That's at the very top of the light settings. So we'll set that to movable. Um, just going to go back in here for a second. I think I'm going to make this a little bit darker gray as well. There. Okay, so what we can do is actually, if you hold Alt uh, and click and drag, that will basically duplicate this, this light source. I'm gonna kind of move, drag it over here. Usually, uh, so this will be a fill light. So for the fill light, I'm gonna drop it down a little bit. Okay, kind of put it a bit of a lower, lower angle there. And usually I, I make the fill light a little less intense. So it's, it's gonna be a smaller percentage of, of intensity versus the, the key. So this is our key light. Again, um, I might set this to only a value of like five or six, actually. It looks a little bit better. And then I'll take the, the fill light. So usually my key light is like 70, 80% of the overall light, light power in the scene. And then the other 20 or 30% will be the fill light. So if I set this to one or two, right, we get a, a nice kind of result that way. And we can click on the little eye icon to sort of see what that fill light is basically doing. Now, sometimes what I do is I will cheat this a bit and like turn off shadows for these lights. So if I turn off cast shadows, you know, it might, you know, in this case, it's gonna help actually show the surface a little more evenly lit. So with shadows, you see it's a little darker. It's nice and moody that way. But if I'm doing this more just for presentation purposes, then I might just disable shadows on the fill light. So again, my first light is my key, this is my fill. Um, and then my third light is gonna be basically a top-down spotlight. So I'll drag in a spot. Um, I'll raise its height. And I really just want it to kind of catch highlights on the top of this mesh, like so. So I'll kind of rotate it kind of facing towards the mesh, but still be above, okay? And again, you see it's casting shadow down here now, right? So I don't want it to cast shadow in this case. I just want the highlights. So I'll turn off cast shadow. There. Okay, so. By the way, if you hit G, it's gonna hide the viewport icons for this stuff. So that can kind of make uh, navigating in your scene a little bit easier to do. So uh, the next step and basically final step, so once you've got your kind of lighting set up, again, you may want a different uh, base, but I'm okay with this. This is fine for me. Just to have a bit of a void here is okay. Um, so I'll select the head, hit F to frame. And next up, you're gonna go to the uh, little kind of clapperboard icon and go to add level sequence. So we'll just, we can call it new sequence or just call it turntable is fine. Hit save. Now you wanna make sure you're at 24 frames a second for film. And then uh, down here on the bottom right, this is kind of your end range slider. So I usually like to go to 250, but we're actually gonna to go uh, to 240 frames. So again, this is this little red line is your, um, kind of like your end marker. So you wanna set that to 240, okay? 
So I, I like setting it to 250 just so I have a bit of working room at the end here, so I, I'm not kind of riding right up to the edge. Okay, so what we have to first do is go to add actor to sequence. So what that means is we're adding the, the, the mesh prop basically to the sequence, okay? And um, in here is where we're going to actually do some animation on the on the object. So right now it's basically set to 90 degrees, and this is the the yaw is basically this kind of rotation in this direction. It might be different in your scenes. So you'll have to kind of test and see like what axis is the one that makes sense. But you want it kind of pivoting around its kind of core axis. So I'm going to set this to 90. To set a keyframe, you have to kind of click on the little plus sign here. So right now I'm on frame zero. I'm going to hit the plus sign. And drag the little time slider over to 240. Hit the plus sign again, and then just make sure you add 360. So in this case, it would be 450. Okay, so what we're going to get, if you hit playback, and you can have this loop, by the way, as well. There's some play controls at the bottom of this window. You can have a loop, and then we'll hit playback. So, um... <laughs> Usually when it comes to the turntable, I, I want it to be constantly turning, okay? So um, I'll go back to the sequencer, hit stop. And to change the keys, we have to go into the, this is what's called the curve editor right here, this little button, okay? So then you, again, you expand, go to transform, and you should be able to see those keys there. So we're just gonna left click and drag to highlight. And if you don't see the icon, there is an icon Sorry, let me just uh, reframe that. So I'll select the object, reselect these keys. If you don't see the icon, you're just going to have to extend the window or hit on the little extended uh, icon bar there and set these to linear. So you get a nice constant flow in the animation. Okay. So I'm going to just go in and make sure I have action safe. So this is something you can do to sort of turn on and see, you know, are you going to wind up cutting off any part of the mesh, right? We always want to make sure that we frame things uh, appropriately so that we, we don't kind of lose any part of the model. Okay, I just want to make sure I'm centered on this. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so the other thing I need to do, which I don't have yet, is a, uh, I need a camera. So to do that, you can actually go back to your sequence, which is here. So if you close this, by the way, it's just right here as, a, as an item. You can double click and reopen. Uh, like I said, if you're, I think if you're in the new interface, it just pops up at the bottom in this kind of area where the content browser is. But um, what you're going to do in this case is basically create a new camera. So that will then become your nice new viewport camera, and we'll simply just zoom out with that camera. So that will remain fixed. And again, if we hit the playback, right, so we should get, so again, ideally I like the, the mesh to be dead center of the world and I, I like the camera to be centered on the object as well. So um, I think this looks okay. I'm gonna just double check. So you can always, you know, kind of verify that by throwing in a grid, let's say, or a crosshair. So if we go back to, let's say the, uh, Yeah, so I think, you know, I'm a little off-center, which is fine. I'll just uh, reposition my object here. You can also hit F to frame, and that, that should sort of center things up fairly nicely as well. Okay, so that looks like it's nice and centered. And one last thing I'll talk about is the, the lights themselves. Um, I, you may want to just go in and check your samples. And you can set these up to four. You can set them up higher. I'm going to set these to actually eight samples per light. So when you have big area lights, especially if they're really large, you may want to increase the samples so that your turntables don't turn out uh, noisy. Um, so I'm going to just do that for uh, each of the lights here, just to make sure our samples are set to, you know, if you're if you're struggling with the graphics card too, or maybe your graphics card isn't so fast, you can keep these a bit lower, like two or four, but at least increasing them above the default 
um, will help uh, in terms of quality. Okay, a um, couple other little notes, like if your material, like my, my object is actually open on one side, so I turned on in the material setting, it's right near the top, there's something called two-sided. So it doesn't look uh, kind of hollow and weird when it, when it rotates back, right? So now I'm not getting that kind of uh, strange see-throughness there. Um, one other issue too is the normal map. If the normal map looks like it's kind of popping in inverted or you see a lot of seams, you can scroll down and I believe there is a um, flip green channel option under advanced. So under texture, advanced, uh, flip green channel. So if your normals are showing up weird, it could be because the green and red channels are basically flipped. So you'd have to double click the normal map itself, open it up and, and make that change. Okay, so let's uh, get to the render. The render part now is pretty straightforward. We're basically going to go to the uh, render movie options. So again, that's this little uh, clapper board. Click on that, and it's basically going to give you uh, a render sequence. You can go to the settings, but you're really not going to have much to change. It's basically going to give you a JPEG sequence. Um, go to output. This is your resolution. It's going to use you know, a 24 frame per second uh, frame rate. Going to hit accept, and then render local. Uh, by the way, I think I may have skipped this part. If you go into your project the folder, you want to make sure under content, that's where I load my uh, texture map, my OBJ. And if we go under saved, this is where we get our renders. Um, yeah, I think it's saved. Okay, so... Under save now, uh, under movie renders, I should have the, the sequence. Um, by the way, if this looks a little blurry, which I think mine does, you may want to make sure that there's no motion blur enabled in the project. So I'm going to just uh, close this up. Always a good idea to hit save as well. Go to your uh, project settings. And it's a good idea to kind of check for things like motion blur. Um, yeah, I don't, I'm don't. i not too worried about the... Motion controls. Okay, so motion blur is disabled. Um, so that's good. Okay, let's go back to our turntable. Uh, yeah, if the camera is soft, you can just double check and make sure the um, Depth of field setting, if there is one, um, we just want to make sure. Yeah, let's go to focus settings. Just want to make sure that you know we're in focus on the object here. But uh, I'm not too too worried. You can increase the aperture setting as well, which will just make sure the object is sharp overall. Current aperture. The lower it is, the more uh, depth of field you get. So the higher this current aperture setting is, the the sharper the overall render will be. Uh, in this case, so I'm going to go to uh, the movie sequence. I'm using Adobe Media Encoder, but you can use uh, Premiere. So basically, I want to turn this image sequence into an actual video file. So I'll load uh, Media Encoder. And I'm going to right click uh, or add, uh, click on the plus sign here and uh, locate my sequence. And Adobe's pretty good at this, at actually recognizing this is an image sequence. So I'll hit open. It's going to import the sequence. Now, by default, it doesn't actually interpret the footage at the right frame rate. So you have to go and right-click this. So if you're doing this in Premiere, you can do this in Premiere as well. Or um, you might want to try a software maybe like Handbrake. I think you can import an image sequence in Handbrake. Uh, but if you go to interpret footage, we want to use the frame rate. So there we go, 24 frames a second. Usually I just click on the little H.264 preset and I just want to turn off the audio portion. I'm not going to be exporting audio with this, so I'll just uncheck that. Say OK, and then basically hit uh, hit the little green play key and then it should 
make a nice high quality compressed video turntable that's going to be you know pretty much emailable size so i'm going to just uh set this software to loop i'll go to playback here repeat forever there we go so there we go there's basically my high quality turntable rendered out of unreal so this is great for like client presentations um, you know work in progress that you might have a director or whatever give you feedback on um, 